Hi, I'm Joseph. For the ones that don't know me, I work for Red Hat at Fedora QA and we try to make Fedora as great as possible. And sadly, our best colleague is not here because Adam Williamson, which you already know, I guess, from the demo list, <laughs> is the robotic monkey that makes it all possible. Uh, anyway, uh, we don't only do release validation, we also try to get people to join the awesome community, help us uh, with the testing, hopefully getting joined into the whole process and maybe if we do our work right they will get hired by IBM now. <laughs> and that's why we're here. Like some of the work we do is engaging the community, especially uh, high school and university students and we try to give them work honestly because when we say hey this is this awesome company Red Hat which allows you to do open source you can do awesome stuff in your free time you can get stuff on your resume and then you'll get hired probably if you'll get known and they ask wow that's okay so we what what can we do what can we do and then the hard part begins because as much as Fedora has an awesome set of documentation put together well by them mostly we, I think we have a problem because it's walls of text. The text is awesome, it's complete, but that's the problem, right? Because the text is complete and you need to grasp it in the whole eternity of the text and you need to understand all the details in order to participate efficiently. And Camille and I, and especially Lukáš, my <laughs> we decided that we want to lower the barrier and we want to make it more accessible. So the problem we came up to was the wall of text and the thing that we, the control freaks that we are in Fedora QA, try to do things in the best way, always, like be the most correct, be the most complete. And that's awesome, but it's also a problem. So we sit down and we identify some of the processes that we always try to engage people with. And it's stuff like manual testing, right? Because everybody can install Fedora and everybody can put a mark uh, in the wiki page, everybody can submit a bug, but not that many people know what should you actually put in the bug report. So it's helpful and you don't get uh, chased by the developers, you don't get chased by the QA saying, hey, like, nice work, we are grateful that you've came, but like, we need the details, we need to know how it happened, we need to have some data and the people don't have it, like they don't remember because they didn't know. And there's stuff like testing updates, like you don't feel like submitting bug reports, fair point. You can only install Fedora, you can only use it, and when you use it, you can submit your experience in a simple way. You can use Karma. It's easy, but you need to know it exists. And it's written there, like there's thousands of lines of text, it's written there, but you necessarily don't need to identify that this is the thing you can do easily. So we had an idea. Originally we, want to, we wanted to make this part of the Fedora Hubs seemed like the best place, but sadly it g it's gone now. So we've spent a couple of days with JavaScript, the new hotness and put together a web page. Uh, there's two facets to all of this. The more important for now, I think, is this one. So these are the tasks that we identified that are easy to get people engaged, that are easy. Sorry. That are easy to describe in their fullness, maybe, and that are specific to Federal QA. So release validation testing body karma and then easy fixes because easy fixes is an awesome page right but for me personally it lacks something it's just a list of projects it doesn't tell you much more than hey the project exists and if you want to know more ping somebody and that's awesome but you know st still something to be done there so what we wanted to do is get the expert knowledge distill it and put it in a easy accessible list of steps. So 
say with federal release validation, is there somebody who haven't seen the testing matrices? All right. Maybe the internet is working, so let me. So the thing is that we have this huge, huge list of test cases, basically. And each of the test cases is well defined. You can read how to test, where to get all the stuff, but it's tons of data, right? And if you want to be the most helpful, you probably want to want to check something that's empty, like this thing with the VNC, because nobody tested it. You want to be helpful, so you find something. But it's still not the best way. Like the best test cases you could help us with are those which weren't tested for a long time. And this is test for rawhide from a couple of days ago, maybe a week, I think. And there's a compose every day, sometimes. And you shouldn't necessarily have to go through all the history and say, OK, so I see that somebody tested this one today, but it's the first one after a couple of months, so maybe I should help there, because it doesn't really have the coverage. But you don't necessarily have the data. So this is where this thing gets to, because we can take the wiki pages, we can parse them, and we can get the, get the knowledge from them. So we say, OK, so if you are interested in testing cloud, that means that you might be able to work with OpenStack. You might be able to work with EC2. But you can also do it locally. Don't be scared. So there's crossing the barrier. And then you can see, OK, so there's these test cases. Like, I don't know, base startup. I'm interested. And you get a list, an easy list that you can follow. And maybe you already know some of these steps, but you forgot. Maybe you don't. And if you need to know more, it's just at your grasp. Like, I don't know where to find an ISO, for example. Not sure how. See it. Like, not sure what the environments can be, because we have server, we have silver blue, we have tons of stuff. Like, there's tons of stuff to get. And we try to, like, see which is the best way uh, to approach it, which is the most helpful way for you to test. And you get all the information. And then again, like, if you found a bug, not everybody knows what should they write into the bugzilla, right? So there's a list. And that's what we like. This is with all of the tasks that we with all of the tasks that we identified. We try to distill it down. We try to make the best decisions for the people because we did it a bunch of times. Like every new person asks the same questions, right? Like it's always the same questions. And we have it documented. You all do, I guess. But then again, it's like one of one bullet point in the middle of the other bullet points that are necessarily not the most important ones. So That's the idea. We want to identify tasks that are accessible for beginners, meaning that most anybody should be able to do it with some skill set. Like, you cannot hop on fixing bugs in kernel without some C knowledge, I guess. But then again, there can be easy fixes in kernel. Why not? There, there can be some. But you should be able to say, OK, I know C. Show me all the projects that have some C sources and show me the descriptions on one place and give me the emails or the handles or the web pages. And that's what we did with the easy, easy fixes. Like, the page is awesome, but we wanted to enrich it. And in the end, like, I'd like to get all the information directly into easy fixes, right? So it's not just in this one place, but it's more like a hub. But I still didn't get to there, but I'll, I'll do it, right? But at the moment, that's the information we missed and we collected it, we've shown it. Um, here's where I want some input from you, honestly, because with Fedora QA, we did it. And now we want to scale up, and we'd like to hear from you what's what are your pain points, like what's the thing that you tell to each newcomer. So we can distill it down, we can show it, and we can then say, OK, all the great people in the, in the university who came to let's start with Fedora, let's start with Linux, what can you do? Just hit this web page. There's most of the information. And if you're not sure, just pick a random name because you want to program. You are programming C. Well, 
ping someone, you want to program in Python, just there's me, like you will get to the person directly. And now I guess it's on you, like where do you come from, what do you do, and do you think you have something like that, do you have something? Okay. So I see this is a like really interesting and awesome project and, and of the how it feels, it's, it's really nice, but I see the problem of scalability here, so uh, people cannot come to you every time they want to add the information to the portal and something like new should be there. So the question is how to integrate it into other interfaces we have. So have you thought about like um, creating a generic common easy fix for Fedora tag, for example, in Pagur, so peop all people across different projects can use it consistently in their issues tracker and you get kind of a uh, representation of it I in this portal. Uh, okay, so if I understood correctly, you're asking whether we can do some kind of tagging on the same level as easy fixes. I guess, why not, honestly? Like, it just didn't occur to me. It would be awesome. The thing is, with what I love about easy fixes, right, is that anybody can just say, hey, this is a an easy fix tag and the application we will get it and we'll just show it. Like, sure. The uh, thing is, we obviously do this in an open source way and uh, all the data that's shown, it's just grabbing some JSONs and showing them like we can easily, you don't necessarily need to even like uh, go into the project, you just, if you have the right JSON, the stuff will be shown. But at the moment, this is uh, a proof of concept. So. The idea is awesome. Uh, my question would be, like, uh, do you see at the moment some specific, let's say, I, I don't know what your risk is would be, but let's say there's some, uh, speaking about easy fixes, so uh, let's say, do you think there might be something like a, an activity tag in a wiki, for example, that could be tagged with something like that, or what was the idea? like? In Wiki or in Pagur, because okay. like we have multiple Fedora projects mm -hmm. which are using Pagur to track the sure. their work and so on, and, and also Taiga, yes. So we have several resources where people do their work, and I think it's uh, nice to be uh, able to connect to those resources mm -hmm. and get the information from there, yeah. rather than expect developers to come to another resource yeah. and market uh, here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So maybe, uh, awesome, so maybe I wasn't really clear might have been my English, uh, might have been that I slept for hours, but the thing is this is really just a front, honestly. It collects the data, like it collects the data from easy fixes, it collects the data from the web pages. So uh, what I've seen with easy fixes, for example, there's tons of projects that are not programming, right? There's a uh, project on Pager, Pager that uh, is documentation, for example, like how there might be some other, like there might be outreach, stuff like that. So uh, there are also easy fix projects tagged in there. But uh, at the moment I've missed them because I wasn't really sure how to properly discern them, right? Like how do you tell an easy fix for a community issue from an easy fix kind of based on programming? So maybe we can add another tag like for the social activities, which would be awesome. I think we, 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 we need to like come up with some naming schema, pro maybe namespace for tags, mm -hmm. uh, so that all projects which share, which are on Pagor can share. Mm -hmm. And then in, in this naming schema, you can have like an easy fix prefix and then categorization, like in which category this mm -hmm. easy fix belo belongs to. So for non-categorized, it will be just generic easy fix, sure. but if you want to be more specific, you can mm -hmm. add something. So I think it's m more about uh, discussing with owners of those Pagur repos what, what the naming convention, convention they are, uh, can agree with, mm -hmm. and then we just can Im implement this naming convention as a, as a source of uh, data for, for this service, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, awesome idea, thank you. So. So yeah, there's that, like, I, I love it because I've came to the same issue, right? Like, I've seen easy fixes that are 
documentation that are problems that cannot be solved by coding and especially those specific like the easy fix page like I was talking about enhancing the experience like straight to the point because if I get to the easy fix page I probably would miss that I can just write documentation I can translate I can help organizing events right that's all easy fixes or it's tagged in Pegor like easy fixes so awesome thank you for that so anybody else has some idea like do you think you for the newcomers uh, do you think that you have some processes in your teams or communities that are always repeated like for example when you get to a group of students from a high school and say hey we are from this awesome team and we want your help you can do x and then you realize that you're always saying like to do x you need to download this thing you need to make a decision based on some prior knowledge and the people get back to like i'd like to download for example i'm from fedora so they say like wh which iso should i download which fedora release should i install which 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 so that's the expert knowledge and then it's where like where should i find the most recent bugs where should i find the blocker bugs what what are blocker bugs like tell me tell me and we want to make a hub of information but not only information we want to make a hub of simple processes so if you have some ideas or examples we'd be glad to hear it because this is not really about me telling you what we did i'd like to get the input and make it better make it awesome hello my name is alberto actually i'm uh, I'm part of the Fedora Join Seek. It's a group of people looking for new contributors in a lot of parts of the project. The basic idea is was a hub of a single entry point to the project. Um, I have a couple of questions. We uh, this page is linked to the what can I do for the Fedora project? Uh, page? Yeah, uh, sure. You mean? You mean? Th this I one, mean, right? if we point some people to the what can I do for the Fedora project page, uh -huh. uh, uh, and they, okay, QA is awesome. I and uh, click the 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 link. Uh -huh. Open this page. Yeah, the link is here. Unless, uh, not sure if this big enough, but like in this area, if you didn't find anything oh, okay. helpful. I, okay. I'm, um, but I might be misunderstanding, sir. So. In the opposite direction, right? Oh, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Sure, sure, sure. Because for the Fedora joint team is the... This one, right? Is the entry point. Uh, uh, I don't yeah. know what can, I, uh, what can I do. Okay, check this, and maybe you can find something to do. Oh. But the question is if, okay, uh, if I go to the QA section, of this page, this is pointing to the new page about uh, uh, the, the new page of the yeah. going so, to yeah. QA team. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Why not? I honestly uh, didn't bother any of you with it because it's like it's living on an URL that's probably temporary at the moment, and then with me thinking like maybe too big from the beginning. I wasn't sure that it might, uh, like I wasn't sure it wouldn't just end up being like with all the project in the end, like with all the project being like if you didn't find uh, something you like here, maybe go check okay. on the other page. So I didn't want, I didn't come up with a reasonable solution to just not pollute the whole ecosystem, but I'd love to work on it with you, especially if you like it, like, absolutely. Okay. Um, another, this is my a, a, a comment. Uh, actually, use the RIC protocol uh, mm -hmm. is a little difficult for newcomers. Uh, maybe uh, you have a Telegram bridge for the RIC channel? I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Hey. So, so. Uh, maybe it's a good idea to put that in the in the page because it's on one of the single points with the people say, okay, I don't know who, who do that, no? Mm -hmm. 
Ma Matrix also works with Telegram. Bueno, we have a solution for the tele Telegram bridge. It's very pretty easy use uh, use that, join to the group, and you start talking. Um, uh, this is a, a great idea, put it that. Um, I love your page. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the join six will be appreciate a lot than the six and another is the parts of the project document very well their process to to the newcomers newcomers so maybe uh, okay we we will do a promotion of, of the site of course and we will study that uh, um, maybe we can fork that because sure. it's a great idea thank you yeah absolutely yeah I'm glad you like it, honestly. So, promotion of this thing wasn't my uh, the top of my to-do list because, once again, still uh, proof of concept. But yeah, like absolutely, if you're willing to just add a link somewhere, like with the Telegram, I love it. Like uh, I don't use Telegram that much, but I guess it's something like with the IRC channel loads, something like that. When you join, you just get, hey, I've seen you've joined for the first time after a long time, maybe this is important to maybe you check it out, something like that. Sounds awesome, love it. Uh, I have a couple of more suggestions. Like uh, this format of describing the activity, I, I really like it, but uh, I feel like, uh, again, projects will not come to you to describe mm -hmm. the process in this format. So uh, I think it's better to, if you will, would share the uh, best practices or doc, mm -hmm. how, people how to write such a nice document for people and then projects can use uh, your approach as a template mm -hmm. and so I, I would feel my data in the fields but I will get the same uh, behavior mm -hmm. and so that I, like I'm not a JavaScript person yeah, yeah I have no idea well, how to implement this, so. <laughs> this manually so, so if you just say me if, if I put this in, in uh -huh. those te text uh, like file if I put in these lines my text then it will show up nicely like this uh -huh. this would be already link an awesome tool for every project will have a format to describe their newcomer process in, in, a, in a nice way so we can join this and then we, we just would aggregate it on the on the on the certain mm. front end, but like every project will maintain I his own like page for this kind okay. of data. So share share the uh -huh. template basically. And also, I don't know if you heard, uh, Fedora I infrastructure team will go going to provide an OpenShift for community projects. Finally, that's all. Yes, awesome. so it was announced yesterday, and you can actually already get the access uh -huh. there, so you can migrate to pod in an OpenShift community, community OpenShift instance of Fedora project. I yeah, haven't, haven't heard of that's, that's awesome. Th they are sitting in an, another room right now, like uh -huh. <laughs> talking yeah, about yeah, it. I, I, I but <laughs> you, should, you should just find <laughs> Kevin and ask him for access, and he will add you to as an yeah. early access for, yeah. for this project. Yeah, that's great news. But uh, getting back to your previous comment, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Like, uh, I've been thinking about templates, but what you, like, I didn't get all the way, like I was still thinking about the templates on the data level, like engineer, right? <laughs> and uh, what you say makes much sense, like uh, if we, especially in combination with some of the Pager tags, for example, so we can easily identify the projects and do not need to crawl the whole Pager for just this yeah. one specific file, that uh, makes a lot of sense to me. And uh, honestly, some of this is uh, static data, right? I don't know, uh, the body karma, it's just describing the process. It's exactly what you just mm -hmm. said. Some of it is uh, like pulling and combining data and that's something on the next level where we can then work together with the people, but uh, just being able to say, hey, I have dumped down this process of our sick or something like that. Can you show it for us? Here's a file, sounds awesome. And the template could be easy like, uh, do you think that uh, the template could be just a, I don't know, structured, like restructured text, something like that, yeah. saying, hey, fill these 
in order yeah, to... Yeah, yeah com com commented text file with yeah. like fields and where you, yeah. you need to fill in uh, yeah. the text. For me, it would be it would work definitely. Yeah, absolutely love it. It's awesome. So yeah, I'll get a piece of paper and write it down. <laughs> Also, like I see the applications, for example, for docs site, I can add some uh, custom JavaScript to docs site, so I can actually, t to my generic doc about my project, I can add uh, pages which will be formatted in the way which the custom JavaScript will show like this. So it will be a nice addition to docs engine, basically, if we get get it to these, these sites also. We, we will render this pages like this as a part of the documentation pages. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I quite like it. It's what, and honestly, that's why I wanted to do it because what you just said is so simple yet so complicated for somebody like me to come up with. So, <laughs> so awesome, thank you, thank you for the input. That's absolutely doable. Like, I'm not saying I'm gonna do it on the way back to the Brno, but <laughs> I think it's on a scale where it's super easy to do and the work is more in communicating with people and trying to decide like maybe we can enrich the easy fix stack in bigger some bit and maybe we can put together some standard for a community information file, something like that. So Awesome. Yeah, so it, it would be like optional, but uh, yeah, yeah, we will have the possibility for projects to f easily expose mm -hmm. their like public interface yeah. to people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Foreman. Absolutely, thank you. Right, so thank you for coming. <laughs> I honestly hope I'll get at least an hour of ideas, but then again, there's more of it than I expected when I <coughs> found out that it's 9 a.m. Sunday. So thank you, thank you very much for coming. I'm glad you came. This has been super helpful for me. Like I'm glad that you like it. I'm especially psyched for the new ideas. And I'll put some kind of small-ish presentation to shed. I'll uh, put down at least. Yeah. And there'll be, con there be contact information, so for you that forgot my name already, you could, you could ping me and hopefully we'll push this further. So thank you very much. <laughs>